back and forth with Florida's death penalty rules is putting one family through the ringer. Yesterday at 5, we told you the state Supreme Court ruled that people currently on death row cannot receive the death penalty. But then, just a few hours later, the court changed its mind. New at 5 anchor Chad Oliver has reaction from a family who just wants this whole process over with. Certainly, Peter. Good evening. Right now, there are 173 inmates on death row in Florida. It's unclear what's going to happen to those cases. Amanda Brown. Nearly every September, Roy Brown and his family attend the missing children's ceremony at the state capitol. His daughter was seven in 1998 when she was kidnapped, killed, and likely dumped in Tampa Bay. Amanda's body has never been found. People say, well, does it get any better? No, sir, I don't. Willie Crane is on death row for the crime. Roy Brown says he relives the pain every time Crane's case comes up for an appeal. If they'd have given him a life sentence, we'd have been living our life, you know? But with this death sentence, we have to be there. We have to hear all the stuff we don't like hearing. And, you know, we have to deal with him. Uh, his name is still in my house, and I don't like it. Florida Supreme Court Justice James Perry retired last week. He joins a growing number of former justices who no longer believe the death penalty remains viable. He thinks justices should follow a state law that requires every death row inmate to get a life sentence if Florida's death penalty is ever disbanded. If you're not going to kill him, you need to lock him up like Crane. The one who killed my daughter is locked up. He may never die, but he's locked up. He ain't hurting no more kids. Three years ago, Roy Brown nearly lost his life. He blames his heart attack on stress he feels waiting for justice. Lawmakers in Tallahassee are expected to hold their first committee hearings on the death penalty next week. Chad Oliver, NBC2. The innocent and the death penalty. 18 people have been proven innocent and exonerated by DNA testing in the United States after serving time on death row. They were convicted in 11 states and served a combined 229 years in prison, including 202 years on death row, for crimes they didn't commit. Kurt Bloodsworth served eight years in Maryland prison, including two years on death row, for a murder and rape he didn't commit, before he was exonerated in 1993. Orlando Cruz, and his co-defendant Alejandro Hernandez served more than 10 years on Illinois death row for a murder they didn't commit before DNA testing proved both men innocent in 1995. Vernal Jimerson and Dennis Williams were sentenced to death in the infamous Ford Heights 4 case in Illinois for a pair of 1978 murderers they didn't commit. Jimerson was cleared in 1995 after a decade on death row and Williams served more than 17 years on death row before he was freed in 1996. Robert Miller spent nine years on Oklahoma's death row for a murder and rape he didn't commit before he was cleared by DNA testing in 1998. Ron Williamson spent a decade on Oklahoma's death row for a murder he didn't commit before DNA testing secured by the Innocence Project proved him innocent in 1999. His co-defendant, Dennis Fritz was sentenced to life and spent 11 years in prison before DNA cleared him as well. Ronald Jones, an Innocence Project client, served a decade on Illinois death row for a murder and rape he didn't commit before DNA testing proved his innocence and led to his release in 1999. Earl Washington, a Virginia man with limited mental capacity, was sentenced to death after he allegedly confessed to committing a 1982 murder he didn't commit. He served a decade on death row, once coming within nine days of execution before receiving a stay. He would serve a total of 17 years behind bars before DNA testing obtained by the Innocence Project cleared him in 2000. Frank Lee Smith died of cancer on Florida's death row after serving 14 years for a murder and rape he didn't commit. He was cleared by DNA testing obtained by the Innocence Project 11 months after his death. Charles Irvin Fain served more than 17 years on death row in Idaho for a murder and rape he didn't commit before DNA testing proved his innocence in 2001. Ray Crona served a decade in Arizona prison, including four years on death row, for a murder and rape he didn't commit before DNA testing proved his innocence in 2002. Nicholas Yaris 
served more than 21 years on Pennsylvania's death row before DNA testing proved his innocence and led to his release in 2003. Ryan Matthews served five years on Louisiana's death row for a murder he didn't commit before he was exonerated by DNA testing in 2004. His co-defendant, Travis Hayes, was sentenced to life in prison and served eight years before he was cleared in 2007. Curtis McCarty served 21 years in Oklahoma prison, including nearly 18 years on death row for a murder he didn't commit before DNA tests secured by the Innocence Project led to his exoneration in 2007. He was convicted twice and sentenced to death three times based on forensic misconduct. Kennedy Brewer, an Innocence Project client, served 15 years behind bars, including seven years on death row, for a murder and sexual assault he didn't commit before DNA testing from 2001 finally led to his exoneration in 2008. Michael Blair served 13 years on death row for a murder he didn't commit before DNA testing obtained by his lawyers at the Innocence Project proved his innocence and led to his exoneration in 2008. Damon Thibodeau spent 15 years on death row in Louisiana before he was exonerated in 2012. A prosecution expert who aided in the reinvestigation of his case concluded that the threat of the death penalty contributed to why he falsely confessed to the murder of his cousin. One comment.